What's up everyone, I'm Nick, and I'm wearing my helmet today because we're gonna talk about safe areas. And when we code, we always wanna keep our content, the main things on the screen within the safe area. And in Swift UI, it's actually fairly easy to do once you understand how the safe areas work. So in this video, I'm gonna take you guys through some of the Apple documentation on safe areas so that we can get a good understanding on what they actually are. And then I'll show you in code how we can stay within the safe areas, and even more importantly, how we can go outside these safe areas when we want to. And the quick rule of thumb for this is that if it is content that the user needs to either see or touch or press, then that should stay within the safe area at all times. But if it is something like a background layer, we can extend it and ignore the safe area. So I'm back in Xcode once again. Let's create a new file for this video right click the navigator, new file, Swift UI view. And this time we're talking about safe areas. So let's call this safe area bootcamp. Hit create. Once you have it created, go ahead and click resume on the canvas and let's get coding. So now before we start coding, I wanna quickly introduce you guys to the safe area and what I'm gonna be talking about. So if you go to Google and you search for the Apple human interface guidelines, so I have it up here. The human interface guidelines are basically a resource that Apple has put on their website, on their developer website, uh, that gives us a ton of information and detail about how we should be developing our apps. And most of it revolves around adapting our app to all of the different like possibilities that you could deploy your app on. So you could put it on an iPhone, an iPad, you can put it uh, landscape mode or portrait mode. You could be in light mode and dark mode. And in the visual design section of the guidelines here, Apple basically just gives us very brief information on how we should be handling a lot of these things. And the first thing in this section is the device size, screen sizes, and orientations. And in bold, they have, if your app runs on a specific device, make sure it fits on every screen size. So we can see here that we have all these different possible devices and on the right is all these different possible screen sizes. So when we build our apps, we need to make it adaptive so that it can look good on the iPad as well as the iPhone, as well as a smaller iPhone and et cetera. And if I scroll down, we don't, we're not gonna use the auto layout because that's for UI kit, but in the layout guides and safe area section, they briefly talk about the safe area on an iPhone. And if I zoom in here, this blue area, this blue box is basically the safe area. And the safe area is just the Apple guideline on where you should put all your important content. Because if you're outside the safe area, like in this top edge, it might get cut off on some devices. Additionally, all of the devices are gonna have different size safe areas. So this top section on this iPhone might be different on a different iPhone or a different iPad. So when we build our apps, we basically wanna make sure that all of the real content, all of the, the words and buttons are within the safe area. So I just wanted to introduce you guys to what this safe area is. And if we click on this iPad example here, we can see that the safe area is actually different on the iPad versus the iPhone. And conveniently in Swift UI, Apple actually has settings that will be able to tell us where the safe area is on every device. So let's jump back into the code here. And to our text, I'm going to add a frame. Let's do dot frame. Let's do max width of infinity. We've done this a bunch of times before and I'm gonna add a background color. So let's do dot background color dot red. And we've done this before. The max width will push the frame as big as possible. And let's also add a max height. We'll do max height colon infinity and it will push it as big as possible. And you're immediately going to notice that although we have the max height as of infinity, it's getting caught at the top. It's not actually going to the edge of the iPhone. And as you probably guessed, that's because by default, all of the content in our views will be cut off at the safe area. So we are within the safe area. And that's kind of like a safety feature that Apple has very nicely put into Swift UI. So by default, whenever we add content, it's within the safe area. 
Now, of course, sometimes we do want things to go outside the safe area. So if we had a background like this red here and we wanted the red to go all the way to the edge of the screen, on this item, we can just call dot edges ignoring safe area. And then we can tell it which edge to ignore. So if we did top, it'll ignore that top safe area, but still keep the bottom, which you can see at the bottom of the screen here. If we did bottom, it would ignore the bottom and still show the top. Most commonly when you're ignoring a safe area, I would say people usually do all, but there are obviously specific cases where you only want to ignore one section. So by default, what you need to know is that content will stay within the safe area, but we have the option of making it ignore the safe area. So while this works, I would say this is probably actually bad practice to put real content like our text here, ignoring the safe area. Usually when you ignore the safe area, it's really just for the background layer or the background color. Because let me give you a quick example. Let's put this text in a V stack. Let's put this frame background and edges on the V stack instead of the text. And then let's put a spacer below the text. And it's going to push our text to the top of the screen. And you can see when I click on the text that the frame is up here. But we can't see this text, obviously. And that's because the content, the actual content that we want people to read and see and click on is outside the safe area. So this is not good practice to actually have real content with text and buttons that are ignoring the safe area. And I really can't stress that enough because so many, especially beginner developers, will do something like this and then they'll try to add maybe like padding at the top of maybe 50 to try to push that that top item down. But the problem here is you don't know how much padding to add because all the safe areas are different sizes. And this is just unnecessary. This is just not efficient in Swift UI. So before we end this video, I want to show you two quick ways where you can add that background color and have it ignore the safe areas without having your actual content ignore the safe areas. So again, we don't want the content, the text, the buttons, the things that people need to read and see and click outside the safe area pretty much ever. So what we're going to do is embed this V stack into a Z stack. So I'm going to hold the command button and click embed in Z stack. And again, if you didn't want to hold the command button, you could just type in Z stack, open the brackets and then paste the V stack inside. And in this Z stack, so you guys should be familiar with Z stacks because we did that in a previous video. I'm going to add two layers to the Z stack, one in the front and one in the behind. And the behind layer will be the background. So this will be the background layer. And then the front layer will be the foreground. And now this V stack with the text hello world and the spacer will stay in the foreground. Let's get rid of the padding. So as is right now, again, our text is outside of the safe area. And we don't want that. So let's keep our foreground layer within the safe area. So I'm going to remove this edges er ignoring safe area from this layer. So delete this. And we can see that the V stack is now limited, even though the spacer is pushing it up as much as possible and the max height is infinity. The color is still limited to the safe area. And that's good because our content will never be outside the safe area. And just for a second, while we're getting this set up, I'm going to hide this background red. Let's comment that out. And then let's add our background layer. So just like you add a V stack or a text or a spacer in Swift UI, you can just add a color directly and it will format as its own view. So we can just add a color directly. So I'll do color dot blue. And you can see by default, it has the max width of infinity, the max height of infinity. That's the blue. And then on this blue, I'll just call edges ignoring safe area all. So we have our background layer that ignores the safe area, but we have our foreground layer that still is within the safe area. So if I put this background color red back in, we'll see that this text is still within our safe area. So this is much better code than what we had before because our actual content, buttons, text, things we want to see will never be outside that safe area. I want to show you one more example. It's a little more advanced, but it's actually just as easy to create. So I'm going to highlight what we have 
and comment it out by holding the command button and pressing backslash just so you guys can have this code still still typed up if you want to reference it and let's move it down and what I'm going to do instead is add a scroll view and open the brackets and in this scroll view let's add some content let's add a text and we'll have it say title goes here this will be dot font large title dot frame we'll do max width dot infinity alignment dot leading And let's actually put this text in a V stack. So hold the command button, click on the text, embed in V stack. And within this V stack, let's add a for each. Let's use the data with a range. And I'm moving faster here because we've done this in previous videos. We'll do zero dot dot less than maybe 10. So I'll have 10 loops. Press enter on the content. This will be the index. And then let's just add maybe uh, rounded rectangles with a corner radius of 25 we will do uh, dot fill color dot white we'll set the dot frame to a height of uh, 150 let's give it a shadow of a radius of 10 and let's add some padding of maybe 20 around the whole object and so in our scroll view right now, we have our title, we have our 10 objects. And if I click on the scroll view, and I will stop the automatic preview, if I click on the scroll view, I'll see that the box, the outline of the scroll view is actually within the safe areas. So if I add a dot background, color dot red to the scroll view, the scroll view is actually within the safe areas. And if we press play on the live preview, you'll see that the scroll view is actually super smart in that it starts within the safe area section, but when we scroll, it looks natural because it actually ignores the safe area when it scrolls. This is good because it will go up, but more importantly, when it starts, it's still within the safe area. So again, most beginner developers will say, I want this background to go all the way to the edges of the screen. So they'll call dot edges ignoring safe area dot all and you run into this issue when the starting position is actually outside of the safe area and we do not want that this is not good or efficient so you can do what we did the first time so instead of the edges ignoring safe area we could embed the scroll view in a z stack add a background layer with color dot blue and call edges ignoring safe area all and that would bring your background color to the end and we can get rid of our color red here. And now it looks perfect. However, there's an easier way to do it. So I'm gonna press undo on this, get rid of this Z stack and go back to when we just had the scroll view. Instead of doing that Z stack method, what's actually even more efficient and I highly recommend is instead of putting the edges ignoring safe area all, this modifier right here, Instead of putting it on the scroll view, let's put this on the background. So if we press enter before the color here and press enter after, this is, this is actually just another view. And in a previous video, I covered backgrounds extensively because of how powerful they can be. And people often forget or don't realize that backgrounds are just their own views themselves. So just like we could call edges ignoring safe area on the scroll view, we can call it just ignoring safe area on this background layer. So let's cut this and let's paste it here. And you'll see now that the actual scroll view, if I add a background to the scroll view itself, color dot uh, blue, the actual scroll view itself still starts within the safe area. But the color that we have in the background, which in this case is red, will extend to the edges of the screen. So just two quick tips and real world scenario cases when you want to add background colors to your apps. It's actually quite easy. The key thing to remember here is that any actual content with titles, texts, buttons, keep it within the safe area. Pretty much the only or the main reason at least 
why you would ignore the safe area is for background colors or background images and things like that. If it is actual content that the, view, the user needs to see, view, click, keep it within the safe area. Hey guys, I am adding this quick little section to this video. I made this a while ago uh, and since then Apple has released iOS 14.3. And so if we call that edges ignoring safe area all now, and if we hold the option button and click on edges ignoring safe area and open in the developer documentation, we can see that this edges ignoring safe area has actually been deprecated as of iOS 14.3 and Apple wants us to use ignores safe area edges instead. So real quick, the whole video that we just did is the exact same. So basically this edges ignoring safe area still works, but it's kind of the older method and the newer method that's replacing it is the dot ignores safe area. So let's just put a mark here that this is old and let's comment it out. And when we call ignores safe area, if we just leave it without any parameters here, it's going to ignore all areas. So we can see our view still looks the same, but in here we can add edges and then we could ignore just one edge if we want to ignore just the top and it works the exact same as edges ignoring safe area except this is the newer modifier and it's available in iOS 14 and beyond. So for a bunch of the videos in this course that I've made prior to today uh, I've been using this edges ignoring safe area but just know that you can use and you probably should use this ignore safe area instead but again it does the exact same thing. So that's my little spiel because I've seen this question a hundred times on Stack Overflow and now you guys know how to add backgrounds and work with the safe area in Swift UI. We're going to use this a lot in upcoming videos, so hope you guys are excited. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something. So that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.